Hi, welcome back to The Distressed Princess. Today, I'm continuing on with my requested videos, and this is a request from Carol, more shabby chic. Now, shabby chic may mean different things to different people. To me, it is like the Simply Shabby Chic bedding that they used to sell at Target. So it included all kinds of colors, even blues, greens, pinks, purples. And over the years, I think it's evolved into something a little bit more Victorian with a lot more uh, concentration on pink colors and lace and crochet pieces. But my heart will always lie with the Simply Shabby Chic style with all the brighter colors and the bright whites and florals. So with that in mind, I hope you still enjoy the video. My first DIY, I am going to make a Shabby Chic Bible cover. So this is my favorite Bible to study out of. And here is a sham that I thrifted at Goodwill for only $2. Is that not the cutest pattern? This DIY is really easy. All you do is sort of measure out what size piece you need to cover your Bible, but you need to allow for it to wrap around the insides of the cover. So I'm going to cut out the prettiest piece of the design in the pillow sham, and I'm also keeping that batting. So I'm cutting through both sides of this material because I want it to keep its fluffy quiltiness. So that's why I'm not stripping away any of the layers of this pillow sham. I'm keeping it all together, but just cutting out a large rectangle. And the material is going to fit around the Bible just like this. It's going to wrap around to the inside and you're going to fold it up like this. And I'm gonna show you a way to do this that's non-damaging to your Bible and removable if you want it to be. I'm using double-sided tape from the Dollar Tree inside of the Bible to stick the material down. So that's what makes it removable if you want to remove it later and so it doesn't damage anything. And do the same thing on the back cover. To make it wrap around the top and bottom of the cover, you need to cut that little piece off on the inside. And you also need to cut a slit where the binding of the Bible is so that it can fold up. This time I put the double-sided tape on the material so that it would definitely go where it needed to go when I folded it up. And if you need to, trim the corners to make it neater. After you've wrapped the front and back covers, then you'll have these tails where the binding was, and you can just cut those off. Now remember I said there are layers to a quilted pillow sham, so you'll have this little batting layer, and you'll need to remove that for this to lay completely right on the inside. Remove the batting and put another piece of double-sided tape to hold the two layers of material together. And this also creates a little pocket inside of your Bible on both sides. Shabby chic DIY number two is to repurpose this cheese box. It reminds me of a hat box and I used to collect those when I was a teenager and put my little love letters in them. So I'm going to use this IOD paint inlay, which this is my very first time trying this. And I'm going to see if I can shabby chic up this old cheese box. The first order of business is to paint your project whatever color you want. I'm going with white chalk paint. Once you get your base coat on and it's dry, then you can figure out how you want your design to go on your project. And so I am going to do sort of a no main picture involved, just sort of 
using the colors of the paint inlay and I didn't want like, um, like I think there's an urn with some flowers. I didn't want that to be the center of attention on this piece. I just wanted to use the flowers and the colors and uh, the little cute designs. After you've got that figured out, then you'll need to do some trimming because on the edges of the design, you'll notice there's a teeny tiny little strip of the paper that does not have the paint on it. So you'll need to cut that away so that your paint will all line up correctly. And if you're using two sheets like I am, you'll need to make sure you trim both pieces like that. The next step is to give your project another coat of paint because the paint inlay goes into wet paint. So it doesn't have to be a thick layer. As a matter of fact, it works better if it's a thinner layer, but just make sure that it's not going to be a uh, too big of an area that your paint is going to dry up before you get to that part to work on it. So I think they recommend working in 12 by 16 uh, areas. And here's where I mess up. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention and I put the wrong side down <laughs> onto the wet paint. So you want to make sure that the painted side of this paper, which will be the brighter color side, that should be facing down. And I definitely did this backwards. And I, you see, I'm pressing it all down. I'm rolling it all out and nothing is transferring because the painted side is phasing up instead of down. I was so mad at myself when I realized what I did, but guess what? This stuff is really forgiving. I had even wadded it up and threw it in the trash because I thought, well, I won't be able to reuse that. But then I thought about it and the paint is still there. It wasn't activated, so <laughs> I took it back out of the trash and now I'm laying it down again. Well, I had to repaint my piece again. <laughs> and now I am laying it down with the painted side down, the correct side. And I did have some little wrinkles, as you can see, but it wasn't that hard to work with, even though it was wadded up and in my trash can. So the instructions go, paint your project, lay your paper down, press it into the wet paint, and they use a brayer, which I don't have a brayer, so I'm using a rolling pin. This helps uh, adhere the paper to your project and get out the air bubbles and wrinkles. And so use whatever you have. Then you take a damp rag and wet your project. This is what activates the paint. Now let it set to dry until it's dry to the touch. And I waited an hour. Then come back with your damp rag again and press it into the paper. And while it's damp, peel the paper back, revealing the paint that's now on your project. And you can even keep on using these pieces, so don't throw them away. They have enough paint on them that you can use them on another project. It may not be as bright a design, but the design will still be there. If you're doing this on a furniture piece, you will need to seal it. Here's a shabby chic DIY you can do with Dollar Tree products. This is a wooden photo frame box that came from a Dollar Tree Plus for only $5. I'm going to paint the box. So the first thing I needed to do was remove the pieces that holds the picture that is supposed to go inside. And I wasn't sure, but this inside piece is just plastic. I painted the box with bright white chalk paint. I painted over the hinges and all. 
And you'll also need to paint the piece that goes underneath the picture. And after all that's dry, I'm going to add my picture, which is actually a prayer card that comes in a set that you get from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use the double-sided tape from the Dollar Tree to tape that to the inside piece. Then reassemble everything and it's a beautiful shabby chic box to keep anything in. This vintage handkerchief has been calling my name to do something with for the longest time and I decided I could make a shabby chic lampshade with it. Now if you're fortunate enough to already have a white lampshade or be able to thrift a white lampshade you wouldn't have to do this but I just wanted you to know that you can paint a linen lampshade. I'm using chalk paint but it also helps to dip your brush into some water that helps the linen part of the shade absorb the paint and it goes on a lot smoother. So this hanky is not big enough to go around the whole lampshade. I wish it was, but it's not. So I'm going to have to cut it up into pieces and I'm going to do diamond shapes. And I'm going to use Elmer's spray adhesive to stick these onto the lampshade. That way they are removable if I ever want to change it up later. But no matter how I arranged those little pieces of the hanky, I could not get enough coverage for my liking. So I'm going to fill in some places using this uh, pretty white lace trim. And I'm going to use the spray adhesive to put that in two layers going from the bottom up. And here's how it was looking with the lace going on. I did have to put some little gathers in it because of the shape of the lampshade, but I think that gives it more charm anyway. Then I began applying the pieces of the hanky. So I sprayed the spray adhesive on the handkerchief and then I draped it over the lampshade where I wanted them to go. After I had all the pieces where I wanted them to go, then I trimmed up the top. And here's another idea using this same sort of lampshade. I've also painted this one white and I'm using some IOD transfers on this one. I just cut out the pretty cabbage roses and transferred them onto the shade. I didn't use the lettering for this one. I just wanted the roses. And then to make sure that they stayed there forever, I sealed them up with some Mod Podge. Now let's look back at all our shabby chic DIYs today.
If you liked this video, please do me a favor and hit the like button down below. Consider subscribing. I would love it if you joined my YouTube family. If you would like to see more shabby chic DIYs, here's another video I have loaded up for you, and I'll see you next time. Bye!